Welcome to Connected everyone. Here I am ready to connect with my guests Denise and Kenny Golfos who have accepted very kindly to share their story family's journey through autism. A story that will tell us about strength, compassion and love. Do not move, Connected starts right now. Denise and Kenny met back in 2000 in La Paz, Bolivia, and after five years together, they decided to get married. That same year, they decided to leave Bolivia and make a new life for themselves in Miami, Florida. There is when they had their son and first child, Tristan, in 2008. As new parents who were not sure about anything, they started noticing Tristan wasn't developing the same as his peers around two years old. They started suspecting something around three, but didn't get the official diagnosis for autism until after he was four. They were deathly afraid of having two children on the spectrum after Tristan's diagnosis. They started looking for every resource they could to help him and to learn more about autism. Tristan's sister, Alexa, was born when he was three. Denise became so passionate about this that she went on to study and became a RBT, a Registered Behavior Technician. She learned how to work with Tristan and also other kids on the spectrum. This is her new passion in life and in the future she wants to work in Bolivia for these children. Today, Tristan is 11 years old. They found an amazing school in Melbourne, Florida called the Sunder Academy. His progress has skyrocketed and they couldn't be happier. Tristan has many struggles, but the family is always with him every step of the way. Tristan and his daddy are basically attached at the hip and they are lost without one another. Welcome back everyone and we are already connected with the Golfus family. I am so happy to have you guys here. We are already connected with Kenny, with Denise and also with Alexa. Welcome to Connected. How are you guys doing today? Thank you very much. Uh, we're, we're grateful for you to have us uh, here in the you, and uh, we're always happy to spread any kind of awareness. Uh, in regards to autism. That is great. So we have a lot to talk and I am dying to like know about your story and have the people know and learn, especially learn from you guys. So let's go ahead with the first question. Let's go from general to specific. Guys, please tell us what is autism and what are the different stages of types of autism that are out there? Well, um, that's a very good question, and um, it's, a, it's not easy to answer. Autism, um, an autism spectrum disorder, ASD, has a very broad spectrum, and there's a lot that follows that falls underneath that. Uh, but there is something that um, I, I'd like to say in regards to what autism is all about um, that I have here. So autism. It's a word that refers to a wide range of developmental disorders that some people are born with or develop early in life. Uh, the group of disorders makes up what doctors call the autism spectrum. Uh, someone whose condition falls within the spectrum has autism spectrum disorder, ASD. And uh, autism, it affects the brain and it makes communicating and interacting with other people like chatting, playing, hanging out or social, socializing more difficult. Uh, people on the autism spectrum, they often have trouble talking or understanding language from an early age. Um, it can be hard for them to play games and understand the rules when they, they are a kid. Um, as they become teens, people on the autism spectrum uh, might have trouble understanding what clothes are cool to wear or how to play sports or how to just hang out and talk. So not everybody with autism spectrum disorder has uh, the same difficulty. They have autism that is, may have autism that is more severe. 
uh, two people with autism spectrum disorder may not act alike or have the same set of skills. Some people with autism are especially good at music or computers or art, just like other normal teens. Um, others may have troubles with speech and balance and coordination, just like other people. Uh, about 40% of people with autism spectrum disorder have average or above average intelligence. The other 60% have intellectual disabilities that r uh, range from mild to severe. Uh, autism spectrum is a condition. It's not a problem. Please, parents, take, uh, take caregivers, understand this is not a problem. This is a condition like everybody born with one eye bigger than the other one or is diabetic or it is a treatment since born until die. It's not a problem, it's a condition. That's important because there's a lot of parents that say he has a problem and no, it's not a problem. It's a condition and he needs a treatment. Very important. Um to, to actually be able to make the, separate these two, no? the condition and the problem. Thank you, Denise, for that. Then guys, another thing that I wanted to uh, do is like go back on time a little bit because before when people had uh, this type of uh, situation on their families, uh, help was not always available. So families before used to keep them at home, not send them to school and stuff like that. But today, uh, thank God, it, they are being more uncertain in society and there is more help for everybody. So going back on time, tell me, how was your experience when you guys uh, had the di Tristan's diagnosed with autism? Well, we had a process. First, we have to accept, uh, accept that he was autistic. And that's a big time of losing of therapies, of information, of learning. And that is, we regret big time of that. But after we pass all this process, it comes time for learn. And we learn things like patience, uh, acceptance, very important. Uh, things that they teach you in the therapies, like uh, how to teach him how to listen, how to uh, sit down for five minutes. Um, but also more important, how to love your child. Right. And also, not only you guys were having your first child, but it was like a double challenge. First child and with autism. So there was a lot for you guys to, to learn there. Well, when we decided to have a first kid, we knew that our life is going to change. Now we decide to have our first kid, but our first kid is not what we thought. And we changed our lives completely. Now we have to adjust, not just what to move, but also what everybody, the three of us, are happy doing activities with him. And if they got at the point that it's not it's not a hard in, anymore. They got at the point that we, we can feed him in every uh, activity that we want to go, and it makes our easy life. So um, I would have to say that it was actually uh, very tough for us personally. We went through a, a process and we spent a lot of time, um, I'm ashamed to say, in denial. We did not want to accept it. And we lost a lot of valuable time. Um, and I can't stress the importance for other families to, to, to move through this process for a while. After the, the, the period of denial, uh, we finally moved on to acceptance uh, of, you know, that Tristan was different and he was not like other children. And we went through our own personal battles. We shed a lot of tears. Um, it was very tough for us. And we did a lot of studying and learning. And we began looking for resources everywhere that we could. We began to get every single kind of therapy that we thought was gonna help anything that we can get that was available for him. But us as first time parents and you know, here in the United States alone without our families, uh, we felt very alone and we were very lost. I bet. And then, guys, okay, so 
you guys get the diagnose because I'm sure when you guys got married and you were pregnant you guys had your plans and you guys had your idea how do you want to you know start your life but then Tristan comes and you have the di the autistic diagnose how did that change your plans as a family you're, you're, you're absolutely right. So, you know, when we were uh, pregnant, Tristan, uh, we really had a, you know, a picture of how our lives would be. And, you know, the things that we were hoping for, you know, I was hoping for Tristan to maybe have a similar childhood like I did, you know, with you know, growing up, playing sports and doing different things like that. Uh, but for us, it, it changed everything. It changed our whole lives. Um, our whole everything went that every move that we make um is based on you know the resources that are available for him uh we even moved from we were living in miami for so many years we moved from miami just to get fit for a better school for him um so everything that we do um has changed because since the diagnosis and um yeah, you know, our main focus is, you know, anything that we can do to help his development. I see. And I think, Kenny, what you said was really important. Actually, both of you said that you guys spend um, a lot of time on denial instead of like taking action. So let's, if we have to be very, if we have to point like a couple of symptoms or a couple of things or actions that you saw it, but you didn't take action. Well, um, first of all, it's important to know, um, you know, no two children on the spectrum are the same. So but one symptoms one may have, another one may not have the same, or just because there are some symptoms does not mean that the child is on the spectrum. But there are things like um, speech delay, uh, repetition, uh, ukulele, where they're repeating uh, your language, um, jumping, flapping. These are all um, common type of things that you can find uh, with children on the spectrum. Oh, okay, how about changing our lives? Our lives change completely, especially mine. I, um, I, first, I, I accept two people coming, two people that i never seen before, to come to my house to teach me how to raise my kid. It's very important because you as a parent think you, you know everything about your child and you have to accept that you need help and you to help your, 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 your child. So these two people helped me so much that I understand myself that I need to take some classes so on my RBT license, well, I have uh, the license to teach other kids in the spectrum how to have a happy life. But it doesn't help it just to the kids on the spectrum. It helps kids, regular kids like my son, it helps my, my husband, you know, because it's another kid. But it helps the entire family. It helps everybody. It's not just because you're autistic, you have to do this. It helps everybody. So we have to, we open our mind. We change completely the way that we see everything in our lives. And we understand that is this is a bless for us. This changed our lives so much that we decided as a family go in a couple of years to Bolivia and help the kids on the spectrum. Because I see that they need it. It doesn't matter where they are from. They need help. They need the people to believe in them. They need a place to work, place to feel that they're valued. They're people. They're very valued. Right. So, guys, okay, it's been 11 years. And through all of this path, which are the therapies that you uh, used? Denise, you were saying that you invited to, you had two people that came to your own house to teach you uh, how to raise your kid. But besides that, what else did you guys use that work out? And what are the other therapies that didn't work out as much? What would you say about those therapies? The therapy that works more for us, it was hot, hot therapy, kissing a lot, 
listen to our son. He's uh, sorry. That's okay. To the necessities as a person and learn. Learn from here a lot from, from him. Uh, we learn so many stuff that we are so happy to have a perfect child. Um, we did a lot of things. Um, we, we got every kind of therapy that we could. So started out with speech therapy. Um, then he was doing OT therapy and uh, physical therapy. And then uh, lastly, behavioral therapy. But it got to the point for us where um, I mean, his life was just going to school then going to therapies and then going to bed. You know, he had no more life. Um, and we felt that we overloaded him uh, with that. Even though, you know, at the same time, we felt he needed those therapies. So, you know, we cut back on the therapies and, and um, we went down to just behavioral therapy um, as far as that's concerned. But apart from that, um, I cannot stress enough um, for anybody, any family that may have a child on the, uh, on the spectrum, that the, their diet is very important. The diet, what they're, what they're consuming. Um, for example, uh, we got rid of cow's milk. Uh, so our son, Tristan, he doesn't drink cow's milk for years now because actually um, it affects a lot of kids that are on the spectrum. It causes swelling in the brain. So we switched them over to almond milk. Um, we, at first we tried cutting out gluten, but it was a, that was a little bit difficult. So we cut back on gluten, we cut down on sugars. We, got, we changed the diet completely to more healthy foods. Um, and it made a world of difference. I cannot stress the importance of that. They say the gut is the second brain and uh, that really affects children on the, on the spectrum. A lot of them have issues usually with um, something with the gut or going to the bathroom and things like that. Um, right. Apart from that, something else, um, things like tablets and the cell phones, they're really good. They help these kids, they learn things from there, but at the same time, we have to balance it and we make sure that we limit the time on there because so much, or at least Tristan, he will get lost in his own world while he's in on one of these devices. And we need to bring him into our world with us. So we limit that time on the tablet, but we do appreciate the things that he can and does learn from that. Right. And also, I think like it's so important what Denise was saying about the emotional part right about being able to express your feelings how she mentioned a couple of therapies with animals what else did you guys use in order to like teach him how to express the feelings or the emotions he could uh, basically feel yeah yes um so very right and, and, and i failed to mention yes Kristen had therapies with animals with he had a horse therapy um, he goes to dolphin therapy, which we're actually going to see. Um, those things are very important because these animals, they can connect, there's a connection. They understand um, what's going on inside of the child more than we can. They're very perceptive about that. You know, we got him a, a dog, he has his own cat. And these connections that he has with the animals are very important. And when he's having a tough time and he's beginning to have a meltdown or, or something, they sense it and they come and they comfort him. And it's so very important. Wow, that's great. Okay, so you guys as a family, the four of you, what is the message you guys send to the world? What would you like to see change? What would you like to see improve? What would you ask to people? Like not only to the families that have autism in their family, but also to the ones that are, you know, sometimes you just meet somebody that has a kid or are different situations. What would you tell these people? Okay. Well, first I wanna say thank you for, for inviting us. It's very important for us to have a kid in the spectrum and and teach other people that it's not bad to have a kid in this picture. It's a blessing, it's a gift, and we wanna spread the love. The things that we learn with him is, as a human, we forgot. We forgot to be innocent. We forgot to be uh, sincere between the other one. 
we forgot to be compassion because we want to show ourselves different way. And he teaches us that be yourself is so good and so fun. Be outside and run behind a frog. He will not eat you. Uh, catch butterflies is fun. Paint your face and go outside. Be yourself is so important. Thank you for Tristan to be a teacher for us. Hi, I am a Tristan's brother, Tristan's sister, and um, my name's Alexa. And please don't give up for for your child. Please don't give up until all the pieces fit. Thank you, Alexa. So um, just to, to finish off here, and uh, I want to say thank you again for um, inviting us here um, today with you and allowing us to, to be able to spread our message um, the, the best that we can and spread awareness. So first of all, for, this goes both for parents with children on the spectrum and then, uh, you know, people outside of, uh, that don't have children on the spectrum. One, as Denise said, Early intervention is so very important. Please remember that. You, the sooner that you can get help and therapies, things for your child, the more it's going to help and benefit them. So do your best to not try to make the same mistakes like as I did, staying in denial for so long and move quickly. The next thing is, like Denise and, and Alexa are saying, never give up. It, it, sometimes it can be so hard. It can be so very hard and taxing and you get tired. You just got to keep pushing, keep pushing for your child. Um, after that, I, I would want to spread for everybody um, to ha and have some inclusion and awareness for, for these children because you have no idea how it is to have your child on the playground being excluded by all the children or to sit around at a table, maybe a dinner table, and everyone is talking to everyone except your child. They're keeping them out because maybe he or she doesn't know how to communicate the way that they're used to. So they just ignore him. So that's that's another thing, you know, please include them um, with everything. They Just because they can't speak and communicate to you does not mean that they don't want to be part of the conversation or be part of everything with you. So please don't ignore them. And as Denise said, don't judge too quickly. You may see a, a child in the in the marketplace screaming and crying, and you might think, oh, uh, he's un malcriado, you know, but you don't know what's going on with that family. You don't know what's going on with that child. You don't know how hard it is for that parent to take their child out to public and then have, when their child goes through a meltdown, then you can feel, you can feel all the eyes watching you. You can hear the whispers behind your back talking about your child. So we want to be felt included in part, you know, we don't want to be judged so quickly. Um, also, another thing, which is a problem for myself, but don't worry about the rate that your child progresses because any progression is important and it's a good thing. So, so, so what if your child is 12 years old and just learning how to tie his or her shoes? You know, it, it doesn't matter as long as they're learning and they're progressing. That's a very good thing. And for any parents that may have children on the, on the spectrum, there's support out there. There's lots of places that you can go. There's Facebook groups, you know, um, um, Instagram, whatever, Twitter. There's a lot of groups. And some parents that may be, you know, embarrassed or don't want to like really spread or let it be known that their child is on the spectrum. These groups are closed, right? Your, your information is, is private there. And they're very helpful. They're always willing to be helpful with any questions or anything that you may have. Same thing with Denise and I. I mean, anybody that may have any questions or anything, we're always here. We're open to accept anybody that may want to ask us anything. They can reach out to us um, at any time. The, the, the main thing is here, you're not alone. You're not alone. There's a lot of people out here like us, and there's a lot of support. Nice. 
so much to learn and so many things that you guys said is truth and the first thing that i want to rescue is that nobody is alone and that's a great message guys i want to thank you so much for the time that you took to spend with us today and for sharing your story i want to send you a kiss all the way to florida thank you so much and uh, until next time and also for tristan guys bye bye thank, thank you so you. much thank you. Thank you. Love presents us some really tough situations. We learn from them, we value them, and in the best cases, we get inspired from them. I love to see the progress of this beautiful family. I wish them all the best and all the love in the world. To connect with me, send me an email or a private message on my Facebook page. Stay connected and until next time with me, bye-bye.